Hello, I'm Dr. Richard W. Fleming. I am with the Beverly Hills Institute of Aesthetic and Reconstructive Surgery on Bedford Drive in Beverly Hills. Today you will see one of a series of podcasts which we have filmed discussing various aspects of facial aesthetics and facial cosmetic treatments. Today we're going to talk about rhinoplasty, which is by far the most common cosmetic operation done in the face and neck. It's a topic that is frequently discussed because it is so popular. It is a very, very challenging operation. Although it's very common, we do many rhinoplasties, it is still the most challenging operation that we do. It is difficult because of its location, it's highly visible. We're dealing not only with appearance in trying to make the nose proportional to surrounding facial features, but we're also very concerned about maintaining or improving nasal function. People, when they come to the office for consultation for rhinoplasty surgery, frequently mention Natalie Portman, who we see here. She's well known to all of you as an Oscar winner for the Black Swan. What's so nice about her nose is it's very proportional to her surrounding facial features. It's slim, it's defined, matches the rest of her facial characteristics. So people come in and they'll talk to us about celebrities or public figures because it's a very convenient way of describing what they think is the ideal look. Whenever we talk about rhinoplasty, people tend to think of nasal reduction making a big nose smaller which is true, that is done many times, as we see in this patient. She came in, the nose did not match her normal uh, facial characteristics, her feminine characteristics, so we reduced the size of the nose. Now that's a goal in many operations, but having done this surgery for over 35 years, I don't think I've ever done any two noses the same way. It's always individualized. Every nose is different. Now this lady also had a larger nose, but was not reduced as much as the previous example, and yet it was brought into proportion with the surrounding facial features. We want a well-defined nose. We want a strong nose. We can change the underlying nasal structures to improve nasal appearance and width projection from the face. We cannot change the skin, and that's one of the things that we always talk about with patients, that we can refine and sculpt the underlying cartilage and bone, but we cannot do much about the skin. So we're careful to establish normal expectations for the patients preoperatively. Now this is a young lady who actually needed some augmentation and support. You see here, up between her eyes at the top of her bridge, she really did not have adequate bone. Her nose is hanging, the tip is hanging down. This is very weak, her cartilages were very weak. So we needed to build up and support this lady's nose. This was not the result of a previous bad operation. This was her inherited characteristics. So we added to her nose in this location. We lifted up her nose, increased her projection, and put cartilage in here to support that nose. So these are examples of the way we individualize the procedure for each patient to meet their particular needs. This, this young lady, she had somewhat of a hump. Her nose, however, was basically very nice. She simply needed refinement and definition which is what we achieved with this young lady. The days of the scooped out, turned up, pinched nose are fortunately long gone. So we want to maintain a strong nose. This young lady had the lower part of her nose hanging. She had a little bit of curvature here. We were able to readjust the different parts of the nose so that all parts are uh, in congruity and in proportion. You look at a young lady here, it looks like she has a big bump. Well, she does have somewhat of a bump, but the truth of the matter, she does not have adequate projection of her tip here. So in a lady like this, we're also grafting the nose to maintain 
proportion and stimulate the cartilage so that we have good definition. Traditionally, classically, for well over 100 years, nasal surgery was done through incisions only inside the nose. About 35 years ago, four of us uh, were the first in North America to use the open technique. The open technique, what we're doing, in addition to the incisions inside the nose, we are making an incision right here, if you look very closely, the incisions right here between the nostrils. That gives us better exposure. We'll use it frequently uh, when we're augmenting a nose, a nose that really needs tissue, cartilage, bone added to it. We do it in revisions. Over two-thirds of the rhinoplasties that we do are revisions of work that's been done before the patient ever came to our clinic. As I said at the top of this discussion, rhinoplasty is one of the most challenging operations that we do. Many times patients have to have revisions if in fact they do not select an experienced surgeon when they have this operation performed. As you can see it heals very very nicely uh, and will not be seen uh, after healing is complete in approximately six weeks. And this is an example of a young lady who did have her nose done. She'd had it done twice. She was a professional cheerleader. She had her nose done because it was necessary for her work. She felt her career advance, advancement depended somewhat on the appearance of her nose. She went and had her nose done and unfortunately too much was removed. You see here the cartilage is, is hanging very, very low. So we take cartilage from other parts of the body, typically the septum, which is inside the nose, or we can take cartilage from the ear and in rare occasions from the ribs. The cartilage was added here and the lower part of the tip here elevated so we can achieve a normal result. Our goal with this surgery really is a natural result. And that word is key for any type of cosmetic surgery that we're doing. It must look natural. It looks proportional. Nobody would know that you've had your nose done after a properly performed rhinoplasty. And that's patient and surgeon's goal. I hope you've gotten some insight into rhinoplasty surgery. Certainly this was a, a brief discussion. If you are interested in rhinoplasty surgery for yourself, friends, family member, I refer you to our website, which is www.bevhills.com, for a more complete discussion about rhinoplasty. You make me feel so young. You make me feel so spring has sprung. And every time I see you grin, I'm such a happy individual the moment that you speak. I want to go.